I'm just scared that the, because the unfortunate thing is that fire is going to change into a volcano soon as I get the next beat. So please let that fire just keep on burning because don't let it go down. But colleagues, um, it's just really been such a privilege to spend the last three days with you and I'm honestly struggling to sleep um, because it's just so much that we're all thinking about, um, there really is. And um, what we're endeavouring to do at the School of Governance is, and especially um, the way I see my personal role in the School of Governance, is that we're setting this highway. We know where the North Star is, and we're setting the highway and building this big road. But on this road, there are numerous vehicles that are riding. Numerous. Because how do we tackle a country if we've got this one little car that's busy riding and we want to change a nation? But do you agree that there are many South Africans in our South Africa? Yes or no? And do you agree that we all need to stand together to try and survive and make this country a great country? Amen. And so what we've tried to do at the School of Governance program is that if all of you are aspiring future candidates, we have to expose you to leaders that are all totally different. Because in some of the um, uh, comments that we've seen in the in lectures, everybody writes their own story and each person is their own brand. And so we've had really great, great, great leaders. And if you think of um, leaders like Musi and Sheridan and, and all the leaders that have come, but I believe today we're going to add to that basket of leadership, of totally unique and different leaders. And we've decided in, when we did our program, we're going to start with one leader that's completely unique and different and end up with an international leader that's completely unique and different. Because he's a congressman in the government of the United States and you can see the different leadership skills. So always aspire to, um, to be somebody. And Neil, I didn't tell you, but um, I don't know about you as well, but the quote of yesterday that I really loved came from Winston Churchill, where Winston Churchill said, history will be kind to me because I wrote it. Isn't that unbelievable? So this is all history making stuff. So um, I'm very privileged to introduce to you um, a very special person, a very unique person, um, and his gifts and talents are completely different and um, he's really taught me some things that I need to keep on thinking about because I haven't come across a leader like him before and one of his big things that he says reminds me of is two things and that's why we've got him as this morning spe um, a speaker on the topic of candidate um, uh, managing and the first thing Neil De Beer taught me was that, Michael, we are in a war. Yeah. We are in a war. Mm -hmm. So, bad luck, guys, a nice person like me, like, get your head, it's not right, right? <laughs> We are in a war. And you'll understand why he says that. But the second thing that he's taught me personally, you need a lot of money to play this war. That's his two strengths. And so I believe that we've really got the perfect speaker to start this last day. And let me just give you a little bit of his background. But many, many times I've had a CV and I can break the CV down um, to a couple of paragraphs. But Alka Kira is like a sin and I thought, no, I have to say that I can't leave that part. So I'm not going to read it. It's a little bit longer than before. But um, he's got three backgrounds. He's got a military background, a business background, and a political background. So what is his political background? He's got an um, extensive military background, most notably that he joined the liberation struggle of the ANC military intelli intelligence wing of Inkonte Wesiswe as an undercover intelligence agent in, 19, in 1988. Yeah. 
33 years ago, he decided to join the ANC as an intelligence agent. Why not put me a book? Eh? Yeah, I'm right, sorry. Um, and then he'll return to South Africa at the dawn of democracy in 1994 and was incorporated in the, um, in the NSA in the New South Africa and served in that capacity for several years. So he's become an intelligence, um, an intelligence agent for many, many years. So please don't give him your name and your surname because he's immediately going to, that file will open and has an honest one here yet. So please just keep your, just say your name but not your surname. <laughs> his business background is he's founder and international executive pre president of the Nadevi Group, one of the leading African commercial consulting agencies, in addition to being the president of the Investment Fund of Africa, a Mauritian based fund for Africa infra infrastructure investment. And it's one of the things is my big strength is I've always believed that leaders have to have international experience and be business competent to lead a country. There's no doubt. Uh, Politically, under his guidance, he started the Office of the African Business Development and was founded as the first Secretary General, looked at the active implementation of African Union initiatives such as the New Partnership for African Development. Can you believe it that he's also advised numerous nations in his leadership, and those included Zimbabwe, Uganda. Did you advise Zimbabwe a well? <laughs> Did you honestly advise some Bob? I failed. Even you failed. Or I said, must I leave that out? And please take it off your CV for the future. Uganda, South Sudan, Namibia, Libya, Botswana, Malawi, and Zambia. But now, um, um, Neil has um, really done something very profound, and um, we are very pleased as South Africans that he started a new movement called the United Dem um, Independent Movement by educating citizens of the South Africa of how to become independent and make South Africa great again. Ladies and gentlemen, please, all of you, do me one favor. You take your hands over like this to the one side, and you take a seat belt, and you go across your body, across your body, and plug it in, because you're going for a ride. I give you Neil the Director Michael Louis, Dr. Michael Louis, I think it's too late. I have all your details ready. <laughs> that is what made me a good spy. Uh, but um, it remains still very new to be in such a platform where openly people speak of you. Uh, all my life, I have had the tendency to hide away. Being a person that was trained by the KGB, yeah. the longest serving intelligence operational nation in the world, I was always told when I was in Moscow that it is better to sit in a corner and watch than simplify yourself in the light to be observed. I'd like to start there. Michael, when I was asked to come, I will never say no to you. Because, like so many that have fallen before us, so many heroes that will never receive an accolade. Michael Louis, you are one. You are a man that rose in a very difficult time in a nation to take on the constitutional concept of diversity but decided to unify and fix the law. Sure. But not only went out to take on a tremendous battle but at the end of the day last year to win the war. and hardened general. I cannot forget war, for I come 
not for it. My motto since a young man was one of simple Latin. Sevis possem parubellum. And funny enough, as a young mad guy tattooed it on my left soldier when I became a combat officer. Little did I know that so many years later, Sevis possem parubellum would become an everyday segment of my life. Because sevis pasem parubellum means if you seek peace, prepare for war. As je wil vrede hee, per tijmal soek jy oorlog. What is war? Well, your wife being disloyal, your husband sleeping around, your cousin gambling and your son partaking in drugs requires sevis pasem parubellum. In Muslim theory, which I studied Islam, they call it an intifada. They call it a jihad. Intervention in the Arabic language. This country has never experienced a more bitter period of the requirement of intervention. But I've begged so much not to turn to war. War is being discussed. War is being uttered by so many now in our country. The far right who has never conceded that 94 happened, today speaks of it. And the far left, in actual fact, demanded. But we, now the moderate middle, are begging for peace in a nation that so quickly can go to war. I come from that man. I decided in 1988, when I was involved in the SANDF and then as a security police officer doing the things demanded to me by state. Terrible things. And in arm van folk and father. The book is out, by the way, Michael, as you know but not my book, that one which my brother wrote, called Undercover with Mandela Spies. Yeah. I'm very happy to say it was a bestseller for six months in this country. Speaking about a young boy that was born in Leindok on a farm in Stellenbosch and who then became a convicted terrorist in this country. A terrorist of what? So for one man it's a terrorist and for the other it is a liberation fighter. So if you kill one, you're a murderer. You kill 20, you're a serial killer. You kill a million, you have committed genocide. And you kill 10 million, you're a conqueror. Isn't it weird? So it depends on a man. No, murder remains murder. The death of one is the death of a nation. In 94, we got liberation, Gabby. We fought a struggle. Not for black and white to exist, but for people to have dignity in this country. We fought for dignity. For if you are white, you are white. If you are from the indigenous nation of the Kwekwai, the Sun, or the Khrikwa, you are a nation. Like the Indebele, Setwana, Bondo, Sulu, those of the Buffalo King. You need a dignity. We fought for it. Some of us never came back. 94, we got it. 
Remember that day? Oh, 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 so help me, God. My dad, Nelson Holly Tlatla, Madi Bahad, Mandela said those words. Also help me, God. Where's he now? Where's that man? Because we know that he passed. Where the hell is his spirit gone? It has died as well. We cannot find him anymore. And the day that Madiba left in spirit Lutuli house, is the day that I remember his command to us. It is a command clearly on record from my dad that now reaches out from the depth of Mordor, from the sounds of the heaven where I believe he sits with so many. I quote, the day that the ANC does to you, which the apartheid government did to us, that day do to them, which you did to them, clearly. This is now happened. Yeah. This is undeniably where we are. And 32 years later, as a member of the African National Congress, I have left, for it is no longer my ANC. And if you deny it, you are in la la land. You are either paid not to, or you are too stupid to understand it, and then there is no hope for you. Because it is so obvious. Like if you are struck by lightning, electricity is above that. We lie. We have become a society of lies. You can't handle the truth. Want jy lieg. Jy lieg. You are lying to yourself. What are these lies? Well, one of these lies fixed by Osa. That a single individual adult person in this republic must belong to a party to go to parliament. Like Eugene Tervlanche one day said <laughs> when I was undercover in the corner in Stellenbosch Hall and I went to go listen to this guy, I knew that he was an absolute mad dictator, but I loved his Afrikaans. <laughs> <laughs> he could speak in Afrikaans for the clippers of race to the Krita, for Drakensberg, when he read Voorzitter. That I can look when he claimed a beyond from Osterba, where a berg had ongeniet, ongeriet. And school was. But the kaki boss and the mont van the kind getoe was op die spien van the veld, ongered, ongebou, and nieuwe. And Eugene Terblant said, Lig back, jy kan met die pad opstap, maar jy kan nie terugkom nie, sê die pad die man hulle gaan sê, Lig back, wat waak jy nie? A liar can walk up a road and lie, but he cannot come back with the same road because people are going to say, liar, what are you doing here? Yeah. We are being lied to. 1.6 trillion rand stolen in three years. We are eating our own carcass. The EFF the ANC, and now, unfortunately, the alliance of whomever has joined, has become a corner that are not for all. Sadly, the words aluta continua does not rain on them. For we have forsaken justice, we have forsaken law, and we have forsaken human rights. Without law, without justice, and without fair play, 
No nation can call itself democratic. And we have no just society. A day where you can murder, relentlessly execute, like yesterday, those poor two people in the cash in transit van that got taken out of it and shot in the head next to an office park. Is this what we have become? A nation of incompassion, a nation where we believe that racial divide nonchalant we are more racist today and divided than ever before. Ever before. Only us that walk the road fail before 94 and bloody will come in today. The rest, you saw it on Netflix. Zai. Zai. Fuzek Zai. Zij wil van mij kom praat. Wie is zij? Hoe are you? Hoe are you to come and comment on a matter? Go to the Jewish people today that are remaining with a number tattooed on their arm. The real people that went into concentration camp. Today you will find them 92 years old. But isn't it said that the sons and the daughters continue that fight. But I'll tell you only those that have the number can really speak of what suffer, suffering is. The rest, you are doing it for your own reason. How can you forgive that? You see, when you go to Auschwitz, when you go to Nuremberg, when you walk it, you will never understand it. But God will let you seize the sentence. Are we saying apartheid was not the same crime? Are we denying it? That apartheid wasn't bad. <laughs> it was declared a crime against humanity by the United Nations. But that's past now. Can we forgive and forgive? You see, Mr. Chairman, we had the TRC. We got to T. We got to truth. We never got to R. We never saw reconciliation in this country. We never saw it. I was part of it. So we heard murder. We heard how policemen cut off young people's heads and buried them with families sitting in court having to hear the truth about what happened to their son and vice versa. Did we follow that mom and dad to Queenstown? Did we follow that mom and dad to Tolo? Coffee and bar? Did you follow them? Knock on their door and say, you now know what happened to Busi. Now we need to forgive and unite. This country is now suffering the consequence of not reconciling soon enough. It's time, Mr. Chairman. We must now unite. If the far right and the far left cannot take hands, we will suffer the consequence. And that is why my address today, briefly, is in two parts and then I would like a debate. I am more of a debate human being than a speech man. Our leaders, our leaders are not of today. Our time has come to past, Michael. We are but the custodians of decision making for the youth. I have sons and daughters. I am now fighting for them. My days are numbered. But whatever decisions we take today will be born the fruits of tomorrow. 
we but borrowed the future to take decisions for the present. And be careful what decisions we take. If it is war, then so be it. What will be left for our children to rebuild? If it is peace, unity, reconciliation, and a dramatic turn to understand that we are nations in a nation, then there's hope. I am asking the youth today to rise. I am asking the youth to stop being apathetic about politics. Because there was a time when you were noble, when you were a politician. There was a time many hundreds of years ago that if you said I'm a politician, you were seen as a person representing people and giving your noble time to speak on their behalf. When did it change? It changed when you got money to be a volunteer. When you started paying politicians to sit, you created an animal. Because the minute you pay someone, you don't want to lose the money in the future. Jy gaan durf om op jou gat te sit vir 20 jaar, want jy soek jy geld. Yes? You don't care anymore. The majority, you are fighting for the seat for money, not to sp now speak for people. What would happen if I take all the salaries away tomorrow of members of parliament? You're still going to be enthusiastic? I judge no. No. The leaders of the future are not those that see politics as a business. The leaders of the future are not people that think that politics is a way to becoming rich. The future of the politician in the youth today are those who return to service to the people. Who speak on behalf of the people. Who go back to the village. Who boil a kai and decides they will be the voice of reason. This is the politician in a leader we are looking for today. Sacrifice. Not self-enrichment. So I'm speaking to the youth. We need you. We need good leaders and that's why Michael, the school of governance, the school of leadership is more than ready today. I watched the YouTube two days ago of one of the princes in Dubai. You know I spent two years there. All that Dubai had was sea and sand. And I said one day to him, Prince, if everything fails in Dubai, what would you do? And he went, I don't know. I said, make glass. You have enough sand. There's always a solution. Sometimes the solution is just around us and we are so worried to look beyond. The solution sits here. The solution sits here. And the solution sits here. So to conclude on leadership, rise. Rise. Turn politics again into a noble art. Inspire the youth to get up. Because today the old people like me have enough sins to pay for in the past. You are clean. But are you? Or are you still being influenced by us old people? Want hoe weet a 16-jarige blanke kind van die kaarwoord op a rugby veld? Today, a young white boy still uses the K word at 16. I thought that word was extinct. Who keeps it going? Well, it's you. It's you, the parent. We must stop it now. Otherwise, publicly, we'll go back to that saying that the sons of the fathers will follow to the children's children. Finally, something interesting. In Isikos, we say 
ufuna imani. Now, when you use the word ufuna, it is rude. You see, when people ask me to uteta yamkov, you can hear my accent is one from Mtata on the street. I don't speak school cloth. Who come along who sang at him? Who fuck? Who tash up? Who knows I come in Daniel? I am a son of the Abatem faith. I am a chief appointed by his royal height. Who's well about? Who boy the child Daniel? So I am a chief. I am the chief of Mbez. So I am also a traditionalist. I have my land and my people as my faith. Ngom knows I am a rural chief, the only second one in the world, except a settler in 1896, given that title by Shah. You, come, chief. You see, in Koza, you say, in the in the you don't say Ufuna. Ufuna is a demand. Ufuna is a coffee. In the tail. Yeah. We have become a country of Ufuna. Yeah, ma? The young people today, they walk around, they go, Ufuna, 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 In the tail. You don't get what you think you deserve. You get what you work for. You'll see me. You'll see me. You'll see I want. You want what? Do you think we walked around in 1988 and said, I want freedom? No. We fought for it. We suffered it. And now you walk around and you want. Yeah, man, no free education. Now you step in. Hey. Hey. Work for it. I'll tell you what. Why don't we go back to national service for a year? Yeah. I'll make you a deal, student. You give me a year of your life, serving your country, and I'll give you free education. Ufuna. It's a good trade, isn't it? So if you want to study accounting, go work in the Department of Treasury for a year. Yeah, go. Ufuna. You see, maybe if you serve your country, you might understand the challenges of this country. So why do doctors in this country do a Zoom idea only? What about the lawyers? So it's coming under my regime. <laughs> my movement, my party, whatever I'm being accused of. You are going back to national service. Not by gun or by much. No, you will go work in the Department of Law, Justice and Treasury. One year, I don't think that's too much. In the US, the French force, you do so. In Israel, you do so. In Sweden, Switzerland, and Denmark. So who the hell are you? Give service. Because maybe if you give service, you deserve something better. I started with Ufunai Mani. What's the biggest challenge, Mr. Program Director, the Honorable? Dr. Michael, what's our challenge? Gerald V. What's one problem? You know what's our problem? Everybody that's sitting here today is asking that if we have a political future, we need money. Mm. Isn't that sad? Do you need money? Who's paying for your poster? Who's paying for your billboard? Who's paying? Because we don't have volunteers anymore, do we? Who no. fool now? Ik kan niet gaan kloppen met die ring. Ik moet toch wat je vriendje krijgen. Oh, werk voor niet. Oeh, schande. No, it says, if you don't give me a sandwich of coffee and maybe a stipend, I'm not going to come to volunteer. Sis, sis. No, but chief, you've got to go knock on the door. Ja, bang, and just knock and promote. Ja, it's a long day. Jane, you want to get paid to volunteer to save your country? That's what's happened. There is no spirit of volunteerism anymore. You want to get paid. What's the price tag for a presidency? 
in this republic? How much does it cost? How much? Anybody? Anybody got a figure for me? But the factual one. What is the cost of the seat of a presidency in the republic? Anybody? Now, what's the cost, son? What's the money? Because when you trust the people, that's one thing. But cash buys the diplomat. How much money? No, no, what's the number? Do you know how much it will cost for you to be the president and the ruling party of this country? Do you have a figure? 5.7 billion rand. Write it down. You have it? You have it in your pocket? Yeah. Anybody? Because I really want to talk to you after this. And I'm not taking your word for it. I want to hear a pin. Anybody? Hey, going, 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 there's a moor that is overgeladen in the sack. You don't have 5.8 billion. Bye bye. I have it. You don't? I'm one ahead. It's a pity it costs money to be a leader. But let us quickly forget about hurrah, the clicking of Alice, of going to one day. How do you raise money? Well, the UIM started. The UIM knew that this young man here actually said it. You're right. It starts with the people. It is a people's freedom. It's not yours. If you want to raise money so that you can become the president and you be the leader and you be it all, you're not going to raise the money. God will not allow it. And I mean God. He won't give you the anointment. He won't. But if you seek money for the people and for the justice of people, the money shall come. It's like business. If you just want to make money, you're not going to be successful. But if you do the product, you'll get money. So the UIM have done three things. We have what we call a domestic fundraising attitude and an international one. Ah, that's why Neil is overseas every month 14 days. I'm a very busy little bee. Without foreign direct investment into this country, we are lost. South Africa is not an island. And we chase them away. You are going to put money into this country as a foreign investor when we are about to take away your land. That's a good policy, isn't it? Sure. So you build a factory in Atlantis, you pay for the land 12 million, you put up the factory of 32, and then tomorrow, we're taking your land. <coughs> really? Sounds attractive, eh? No, then we'd rather go to in South Africa. Ich bin sehr liebe mein Kontinent. Ich bin sehr liebe South Africa. Mach ich nie das Geld. Mach ich dich heiß jeden Tag fragen für ein Geld auf jeden Fall. They're going to tell you, fool me once. Shame on you. Fool me twice. Shame on me. Do you really think we can go to Davos and ask for more money? Do you think the World Bank is running to us to give us credit when we are stealing it from this same country for money? My own country. And it was denied. How embarrassing for me. Because now the money goes to Ivory Coast, Malawi and Madagascar. And I'm powerless to invest in my Money can only be raised on the spirit of truth. 
The African National Congress is fighting each other so much, they forgot to govern. They forgot potholes. They forgot tar roads, electricity. I don't call it ESCOM anymore. I call it ESGAN, but niks kom nie. En beslis nie kracht nie. Becky Taylor is more interested in chasing a guy on a wetsuit to a rest kite surface than arresting the killers in Mitchell's play. TikTok Mboweni, TikTok, cannot explain to me officially what happened to 1.3 trillion. I get me. And our great Dr. McKeezy, who I addressed yesterday, cannot tell me where is 14.2 billion rand of the Department of Health. You are happy? Maybe they should have come to the School of Governance. I'm not happy as a citizen. My name is Albertus Cornelius de Beer, and I am not going to allow this to continue in my name. It's time we rise, it's time we unite, it's time we put our past behind us. For even animals in a forest, be it a reptile, bird, lion or cheetah, understands that the destruction of a forest is a destruction of their habitat. And sometimes the mamba, the slick, is in your, will sit with a bear, a lion and a frog and say, today, let us put species away and fight for the forest. Isn't it weird that we have a better aptitude and altitude and IQ than animals? And we can't get that right. We cannot for one moment just sit back and say, stop the fight. Stop the attack and let us unite to free a country. For if this country fails, where do we go? You know when Zimbabweans start stopping you and telling you they don't know now what to do. Because they ran away from Zim to come here for safety and we are becoming it now. Where do they go? Isn't it a shocking shame that I sit in Abidjan two weeks ago and my country is the laughing stock of the broken. This is what Madiba wanted. This is what Walter Susulu demanded. This is what Chris Hani died for. This is what Kanushi Solomon Muslangu gave his life for. This is what Ashley Creel died for. No, sir. Not here too, any further. My message to the School of Governance is do exactly that. Start educating our future governors and make them free. I am none of any consequence. Someone asked me on carte blanche, you are running for president of the Republic but you are white. <laughs> I said you are or a general that commanded logistics. Let's rise. Let's move a population twice in 2024. Here is new work me. Here is where numbers. And the UIM are ready to move numbers. Remember the God-given code to me. Five, five, three, two. And that's for me to know and for you to come send the spy to find out. <laughs> May God show the light. May we know where we are going only because we are the light and we are not the dark. I said that if this country was a PTY, it should be under business rescue, but I think that's a bit late. Answer is no bankrupt. We just gave 10 billion to a company that's under business rescue. SAA. 
I have a, uh, I have a serviette. On it I wrote, my name is Neil de Beer, and the day that I say in 2024, so help me God the following day for Quebec all day good up up. And the first one is ESCO. And then I'm going to privatize power. I'm going to bring back national service and I'm going to stop the bleed of corruption. You will take an oath of office and you will open yourself to a polygraph every four weeks if you are signing a contract. I will change, if necessary, the Labour Law, the Labour Relations Act, so that we can get the truth out of you. You will go through a daily check of how you live every day. And if you drive a Q7 and you're a DG in a government department, it's as fun to win. We will put another 80,000 police on the street. We will make the police college now not six weeks, six months, you will become a criminologist again. We will no longer pay for income tax, which is not necessary. We will pay SA first and we will give government grants to SMMEs of 5 billion every quarter. We will support entrepreneurs. We will put an extra tax levy of 15% on any imported product henceforth that can be made in this republic. And if you say I sound a bit like Trump, mm, SA first. It's funny that Kusatu marches to save the textile companies in Cape Town, but the golf shirt they're wearing is made in China. Aman. Hey. Kaum ya usile. Nye yele ma kisani. Ye yach ten taki in fred ye chicken nigger. Any aunt. It's time for a new dawn. It's time for a new South Africa. Where color does not matter, religion is respected, and human rights is obvious. So I'm going to take your questions, and if they are poor, I will be disappointed. <laughs> For I have agreed in front of Michael on the 27th of August, when I became a son of God, not a Christian. I am not a Christian. I am a son of God. I don't know this thing, Christianity, anymore. After I'm being attacked, judged by them. Ooh, I got proud. I read the Bible, Michael. Finally, Michael, to you, I gave my life to God in front of you and a man called Graham Powell. On the 27th of August last year, I knelt down and gave my life. It has been the most difficult struggle of my life. Because you are trying to change a wolf into an Alsatianist. <laughs> but I call you bite, my brother. You see, a wolf is a weird animal. It doesn't perform in a circus. But a wolf believes that the strength lies in the wolf, and the wolf's strength lies in the pack. We can only do this together. Aluta continua, Hendi Lengela, si hang ba yo. Di tukos, as en vrede, ni en oorlog. And the choice of this country is in God, and nothing else. So help me God. Thank you, Michael. Let's review the story. difficult session to moderate because it's um, a half a minute for questions. No, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to have one question here and then Gareth, um, if there's anybody on Zoom for a question, and maybe Gareth is in a good mood that we can be a little bit overtired um, because um, I think some of the people really may want to ask. Um, Mama Mayores? I am so happy that you're standing there today. A Neil that was walking the streets of Mutata in 1988, who would change three to four times a day without knowing exactly who is Neil. And now today it's 2021, and you are here today, no more speaking uh, the liberation or the ANC. This room is full of aspiring candidates. I'm not going to say future candidates. 
aspiring candidates and also online. What can you leave with us to equip us? One, what must we leave behind? Two, what must we dwell on? Number three, what must we focus on? I'm scared of the time we've been staying here since Monday. We need to come out here knowing that we, we are not the future candidates. We are the aspiring. With your experience, Neil, that I know that you have, what can you leave this room with? You said war, you said peace. You said a lot. People were thinking that you're going to tell us where to get money. You talk the phone and people are thinking about money. You talk about volunteering. Can you please now set our minds up? From here, where do we go? Hey, Madam Mayoress, you always, always surprise me, but you know we know each other from the dusty roads of Muntan. Yeah. From the gravel roads of Bombay. Oh, yes, yeah. I love you. Yeah. I think I'm in love with you. <laughs> but my problem is I have only a budget for one woman. <laughs> Come on, man. Three great questions. You know, we have meetings on meetings and yeah. conferences about conferences. And if you're in Parliament, then you form an inquiry about why did the conference not work. Less meetings, more action. Thank you. Less conferencing about action and more action and then deliberating at a conference what we have done, not what we are about to do. For you can plan any war like Churchill. But at the end of the day, Churchill said, Madam Speaker, a man that has never changed his mind cannot change anything. I have changed my mind so many times about do I stay a liberator or do I become a government. We must put behind us now the liberation struggle once and for all and become a government for the future. We have liberated ourselves with here we need to liberate ourselves now in the economy because in 94 we gave people the vote but this paper tastes bad, it cannot feed me. We want money in our pockets. The liberation of a nation is here now, not of a proportion of people. BEE failed. It failed. It was an honourable idea. I was part of it, but the implementation of BEE failed and you can argue with me because it wasn't black economic empowerment failed it was sbee -E. selective Select black economic empowerment Selective. we never touch the broad base i cannot wait for the day fail when we call it ee -E. economic economic freedom one Stop the bleeding in this country now. And how do we do it? Go to local elections and fight. 2021 September stops the bleed of the main artery if we can unite and take over the metros and the municipalities. That's how you stop the bleed first. Yes. You stop it there. So get yourself together. Go fight the metros. We can only fight it united. We cannot fight it separate. United. So unite, but get ready for a September that's a roller coaster ride. Mm. What is the UIM going to do? We are not going to go for any more of the metros except eight. I have identified my eight. Like a good commander, I'm focusing on the aircraft carrier, not the little minesweeper. I'm focused on eight. Cape Town, PE, Durban, Bloemfontein, Ekuroleni, Johannesburg, Tswane, Pretoria. We are coming for you. And we are such gentle people. We've warned you. I am going to unleash faith from my 19 submarines, the biggest battle torpedo launch you have ever seen. We are not going to sink them. 
we are just going to dent them. The water will siphon the sinking themselves. So number one, so take back your metros. You don't have to run the metroxes. You can just sit in the corner and scream like hell. Point of order, Yahanara. We will veto you and your moon. We will not let you pass a budget. We will not let you pass. We will get up and go. Excuse me. Uh, hello. Hello. We will make you disruptive because you do it to us. Oh, we are going to pay you back with pain. So that's point one. Take the metros. Number two. Leave the past behind but learn from it that we never ever go back there again and lastly fight crime fight corruption and redistribution of faithful capital redistribution, redistribution not revolution i remember having to explain on behalf of jacob Zoom. What is RDP? He couldn't explain it himself. So I had to get up and say radical economic transformation is radical. <laughs> yep. What a concept. A radical economic transformation. It is exactly what he bloody says. And then he said, yeah, but uh, what is white minority capital? I bloody wrote the book. They are white, they are factually now the minority, and they have bloody capital. What else do you want to call it? But you made it a negative. Yeah. Fail. You spoke about white minority capital in the negative. It's a positive. Because I won't give you a million rand when you haven't even run a bloody sponsor shop. You know. <laughs> no. Thinking businessman will go, yeah, you can't watch you make a shop. Take this million and give me 100,000 rand return on Tuesday. Say no more. No, sir. White minority capital can be used as a positive because we can tell the people in the white minority, you are not minority. You are a momentous mentor in the making. So don't go fight the Rupert. Don't go fight Crystal Visa. Don't go fight GP Ferreira and the Oppenheimers. Make them a partner. You're alienating the obvious. But the money. I want every country Fay, to understand that every company that makes 5 million rand or more in this country will from now on employ 10 interns to study and work under this. That is a good law. Because that's empowerment. That is the real future. Is not taking the people for granted, educating our people to become billionaires themselves. So that's the three things fail. Fight the election, leave the past behind, educate our future. And you can do it here and now.
Bye, donkey, and may God bless you in the future. And Faye, I'll see you at the ballot box. <laughs>